Okay, yeah, we're going to uh, give you another helping of general one of the Library of Congress. And uh, so we'll have to imagine we're kind of a split personality. So Tom will be uh, general one talking, I'll be general one playing the piano. And uh, at one point I'll also be Alan Lomax, of course, who was the folklorist or custodian of folklore at the Library of Congress who uh, set up the in in interviews with, uh, with uh, more. My theory of harmony is to never discard the melody. Always make the melody keep going. Some kind of way, and of course you, your background will always be with plenty harmony with what is known today as uh, riffs. Meaning figures, musically speaking, as figures. I'll show you a riff. That would be a riff again for a melody, for instance, we say uh, the melody was... Uh, an orchestra a great background. The main idea of playing jazz is no piano player can really play jazz unless they try to get the imitation of a band. This is the way some pianos play in jazz with the discords. some of them play with those discords. They don't regard the harmony or the rules or the system of music at all. They just play anything. The main idea is to keep the bass going. That is, they thought by keeping the bass going, it gives them a sort of a set rhythm. By giving them a sort of set rhythm, they imagine they're doing the right thing, which is wrong. There's only a very few jazz pianists. If there's any, as I state today, so far as the present time, musicians as pianists, I don't know of, but only one that has the tendency to be on the right track, and that is Bob Zerke of the Bob Crosby Band. As far as the rest of them, are, well, all of them I can see, it's ragtime pianists in a very fine form. You may notice that the breaks are the most essential things that you can ever do in playing jazz. Without breaks, and without clean breaks, and without beautiful ideas in breaks, you don't need them. Don't think about doing anything else. If you can't have a decent break, you haven't got a jazz band. But you can't even play jazz. I'll show you a good break. Now that's what you call a pretty good break. For instance, I'll play you just a little bit of a melody or something and I'll show you. something you can understand. Uh. <laughs> 
for, um, for instance, the, the Strudders Ball. tempos with your backgrounds and your figures, which is called riffs today. Of course, that happens to be a musical term, riffs. A riff is a background, what you would call a, a foundation. All the band break with maybe one or two or three instruments. It depends upon how the combination is arranged. And as the band breaks, if you have a set, given time, possibly two bars, that's what they call a riff. The fact of it is, Every musician in America had the wrong understanding about jazz today. Somehow or another, it got into the dictionary that jazz was considered a lot of blatant noise and discord tones. That is, something that would be even harmful to the ears. I know many times that I'd be playing against different orchestras and I would notice some of the patrons as they would be dancing around. They'd get near to the orchestra and, of course, I wouldn't permit mine. I'd be a little more careful than that. They'd get near to an orchestra and they'd hold their ears. I heard a very funny fellow say it once in a coloured dance. If that fellow blows any louder, he'll knock my eardrums down. <laughs> of course, uh, you got to be careful of that. Even Germany don't want it. But she don't know why she don't want it. Because it's a noise, that's why. Italy don't want it because it's a noise. Jazz music is based on strictly music. You have the finest ideas from the greatest operas, symphonies, and overtures in jazz music. There's nothing finer than the jazz music because it comes from everything of the finest class music. Jazz music is to be played sweet, soft, plenty rhythm. When you have your plenty rhythm, when you plenty swing, it becomes beautiful. To start with, you can't make a Gender and demand when one is playing triple forte, you've got to be able to come down in order to go up. If a glass is water is full, you can't fill it anymore. But if you have half a glass, you have an opportunity to put more water in it. Jazz music is based on the same principles. I'll play a little number now uh, of the slower type. Uh, Either the slower type of jazz music. You can apply it to any type of tune that depends upon your ability for transformation. So one of my ribs, what do you call ribs in jazz, you know? I've seen them 
wound up so many times to give me heart failure. greatest single-handed entertainer. He was no doubt the outstanding favorite in the whole city of New Orleans, by both white and black. I've never known any pianist to come from any section of the world that would leave New Orleans victorious. We had so many different styles that whenever you came into New Orleans it would make it any difference if you just come from Paris or any part of England or Europe or any place. Whatever your tunes were over there, they were the same tunes in New Orleans. Because <coughs> the boys played every type of tune, and especially Tony. He played all the high class numbers, same as low. He wasn't a bit good looking, but he had a beautiful disposition. He had such a beautiful voice and such a marvelous range. His range on a blues tune would be just exactly like a blues singer. On an opera tune, it'd be just exactly as an opera singer always one of the first with the latest tunes. He sang a blues that he wrote himself called uh, Michigan Water. Play the blues. 
by, you can cut out that picture, show right hand. Just cards, boy, just cards. Way. She was the notoriety kind that everybody liked. She spent her money and didn't hesitate about spending it. And her main drink was champagne. And you couldn't buy it, she'd buy it in abundance. Of course, there were many houses in New Orleans. The district was considered the second to France, meaning the second greatest in the world, with extensions of blocks and blocks. On one side of the uh, north side of Canal Street, which is supposed to be the highest class, although the highest class dig strip, ran from the lowest to the highest, meaning in price and caliber alike. Many of the high-class pianists were always using opium. And the lower ones, they resorted to cocaine, crown, heroin, morphine, and so forth and so on. I can plainly say this for Tony Jackson. I don't remember at any time that anybody ever stated that Tony used any dope. For your information, I'll try and play one of Tony Jackson's fast beat tunes like he used to play years ago.
composer was uh, Buddy Bowden, most powerful trumpet player I ever heard or was ever known. Uh, the name of this tune is Simone Honky Tonk. Uh, people play it. We all played it and sang the title uh, and the theme to it. Yeah, he was a favorite in New Orleans at the time. Stinking butt, take it away. Ah, dirty, nasty, stinking butt, take it away. Oh, Mr. Ball and Play. I thought I heard Buddy Ball and Say, Dirty, nasty, stinking butt, take it away. Funky butt, stinky butt, take it away. And let Mr. Ball and Play. Later on this uh, tune was, uh, I guess, to have been stolen by some author, I don't know anything about. I don't remember his name, but it was published under the title of St. Louis Tickle. But with all the proof the world was to know, it was wrote by Buddy Bowling. Plenty of old musicians know that. Oh, uh, it was written in about 1902. Well, yeah, Buddy Bolden was the most powerful man in history. Why, Buddy Bolden would play sometimes uh, in the most rough places. For instance, the Masonic, Masonic Hall on Perdido and Rampart, which is a very, very rough section. Sometimes uh, they play on the, the Globe or the downtown section. St. Peter and, uh, well, St. Paul. Very, very rough place. Uh, very often you hear killings. Uh, killings wouldn't make any difference, maybe myself. But on a Saturday and Sunday, I'd go to the morgue and see about eight or ten men. Well, that was just a Saturday night. It was uh, nothing to see killings on a Saturday night. Occasionally, Buddy Bowling used to play at the Jackson Hall, uh, which was a small hall on the corner of Jackson Avenue in Franklin in the Garden District. Occasionally be playing in Lincoln Park and I'd get there and see where I'm playing. This is where half of the rough places. I used to go to Lincoln Park uh, myself when Buddy Bolden was out there because I used to like to hear him play and blow. Everybody knew he was good, myself included. Anytime there was a quiet night in Lincoln Park, why? A little place that I used to hang out on the corner. The boys used to call it Hangout Corner in Jackson. South Robson. It was about 20 or 10 or 12 miles from Lincoln Park. Anyway, we were hanging out there. Maybe, I don't know, there was some form of affair. So, uh, in order to get a publicity for a few sounds, our buddy would take his big trumpet and uh, turn it around and towards the city and blow this very, very tune that I'm talking about. In other words, the tune is, I thought I heard Buddy Bolden say, and the whole town would know that. Buddy was there, and after a few seconds, why, the parks would start getting filled. There was nothing for any place that Buddy played at to get it to be filled. Did you hear him play? Oh yeah, I heard him play, because uh, he went into the crazy house. Later he went to the crazy house, but I had an opportunity to be in the Jackson Hall once when he was playing at some matinee, a holiday, and there was a man standing stationary at the bar, a little bit of a short fella, seemingly he was uh, sick and had rheumatism, a great big husky guy steps on his foot, 
It's just between them and boy, an argument got going. And well, a little bit of a guy didn't want to stand for it, so he just pulled out a great big gun, and almost as long as he was old, and shot. And if I hadn't pulled my stomach back, well, he'd have shot me in the stomach. He killed this guy, laying on the floor, and wow, well, goodness, Buddy Bolton started blazing away. He was uh, starting to play up on the balcony bandstand started to blaze away as hard as he was. Well, I realized it was killing Aiden many times. It did too, and we'd start breaking out all the windows, just going through the doors. They'd always had policemen. One policeman uh, had a dance hall too sometimes. Right over the policemen and everything. After I got outside, I thought I was safe, so I decided that I would look and see what had happened. After a while, the patrol pulled up. And look, the dead man, and then they laid him in the bottom of the patrol wagon, and uh, there, here comes the little man, and the short crippled man with rheumatism. And later they took Buddy Bolden in the patrol, and I often wondered why they put Mr. Bolden in that patrol, and he was there, just trying to blow notes to keep everything quiet, and I was there right there, seeing that man get killed. Well, I'll tell you, it was claimed that Buddy Bolden went crazy because he really blew his brains through the trumpet. He was the blowiest man that ever lived since Gabriel. He was really great, but uh, as he didn't play jazz, however, he was a ragtime piano player. Where did he come from? Ah, uh, Buddy was a New Orleans boy, as was I. A Negro? He was a Negro, yes. Right in New Orleans. A dark horn? Oh, no, no, he was a light complexion. Uh, what you call a light brown skin boy. Did he drink hard? Drank all the whiskey. All the whiskey he could find in anybody else's. And the funny thing about those guys in those days, musician didn't think he was a good musician if he had a collar and tie. Collar and tie, he'd have his shirt busted <laughs> wide open every button open and have a red flannel undershirt so the girls could see it and uh, it was great fat. The girls went and how they did for all those red undershirts. I thought I heard Buddy Bolden say Dirty, sticky, take it away Oh, dirty, sticky, take it away I thought I heard him say, I thought I heard Buddy Bowden shout, Funky Bud, Stinky Bud, take it out. Funky Bud, Stinky Bud, take it out. I thought I heard Mr. Bowden shout.